Cards Daily is presented by Arizona Lottery. What's your game? Find out at ArizonaLottery.com. Biggest jump is from week one to week two, and that's what we talked about, cleaning up the penalties, cleaning up the mental errors, playing fast, playing physical, and, and I expect it to be a better overall performance. Yeah, it's funny how this time of year coaches tend to keep a list of what they need and who they want. Paul Calvisi with Cards Daily. For example, the Cardinals, they need to play better run defense than last year. Heck, they need to play better run D than last week. Whenever a team run, runs the ball so well, especially in the beginning of the game when our starters are out there, um, you know, it's not a good look. It's something that we've taken a good look at and something that we have to get corrected. And it gets tougher as starter Darius Phylon was released. So now third round rookie Zach Allen needs to step in and step up. I think that experience was good getting the nerves out of the way, but I think now kind of you get that, you know, what the, you know, the game day experience is going to be like. Definitely has a lot of potential. Um, you know, you can see why he was drafted, where he was drafted, um, has the physical ability to play right away. Um, so now it's just about kind of speeding up that learning curve. All right, of course, the Cardinals are counting on a rookie to run the entire offense and Kyler Murray. And of everything that has impressed the defense, it's his accuracy. So where does that come from? His dad has trained him to do that since he could walk and and that's what it looks like i mean um they worked very very hard to perfect his motion and his accuracy and his touch and and it, it's paid off all right and finally we wrap with how cliff kingsbury started today and that was by paying respects to longtime cardinals receivers coach daryl drake who passed away at age 62. listen to the stories about him um, and his time here he was an amazing man amazing coach uh, anytime you coach 40 years in this profession you impact a lot of lives All right, first of all, our condolences go out to Coach Daryl Drake, uh, his family and, and loved ones, as well as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I had never had the pleasure of working with Coach Drake, but listening to the stories about him um, and his time here, he was an amazing man, amazing coach. Uh, anytime you coach 40 years in this profession, you impact a lot of lives. And um, so we just want to send out you know, our heart out to um, his loved ones, and uh, we're thinking about him. We uh, go ahead. Mitch Monster moves uh, with the activations and bring back to see if you address it. Yeah, to see any, um, you know, obviously we were familiar with him in the spring and felt like to get us through camp needed, you know, some, some help there. Um, he's a guy who knows our system. We like what he's about and um, excited to see how he kind of fits into that, that group. Also, awesome. Brandon Williams, um, Charles Clay took them off the PUP list. They uh, ran this morning, looked good, and, and so we'll start integrating them back into to practices. Did you look like Buddha hurt his foot a little bit yesterday? What's the... What's He's good. We, we, more precautionary, but we had him checked out, and he'll be fully go, full go today. You've been flexible with your tight end usage in the past. What do these guys need to show in order to have a, a decent role this season? I think they have shown it. I, I think um, it's, a, it's a group with each guy providing some different flexibility, if you will. You know, Max is a, is a big, tough, physical, um, very conscientious player. He's going to know it inside and out. He's going to do his job each and every time. You know, Ricky has some ability to separate, be a mismatch, go up and make plays on the football. Daniel's, you know, really fast, 
flat out speed, physical, tough. We, we really like how he's progressed. And then obviously Charles can do a little bit of everything. And, and so we think it's a good group that, that provides a lot of balance in our offense. And um, I expect there, there to be a vital role within that position. Is Brandon, uh, he's, he's been here in the past in, in large part because of his special teams. Can you see him having a role at cornerback? Is it too early to know if that's even a I think it's too early. We do feel like Brandon excels in man coverage and you know that that is going to be uh, a big part of our our scheme and defense and so we're hoping that that he excels um, when he gets his, his opportunity but talented athlete and, and like you said has, has done a nice job on special teams here what, what was it like kind of an offbeat question what was it like to play for mike leach and do you have a favorite mike leach story from your days at texas tech i do but i can't say it here um <laughs> yeah unlike anything i've ever been around in athletics, you know, uh, unique personality, tremendous football coach. Um, the way he coaches it, the way he teaches it, he instills the confidence in his players, particularly from an offensive perspective, that if you execute it the way he teaches, the way he coaches it, it's unstoppable. And, and you can see that's how his teams play. And the level of success he's had at every stop is, is incredible um, at places that are really tough to, to have success, and he, he keeps winning. Do you have a story you can tell? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, he, he is, like I said, just a unique, I mean, you've seen the interviews, the stories. I mean, that's, that's who he is. What you see is what you get. What have your conversations been like with a guy like Terrell Suggs, who's seen it all? I mean, very grown up, if you will. I mean, more man to man, I think. I mean, we, we, can't, we were in the same draft together um, in 03. Yeah, so um, he's still doing it at a high level, and he's seen it all. And, and, I like picking his brain on different things, hearing what he has to say about how things are done, you know, at, at his previous stop. And um, he brings a lot of good energy. I, I didn't really know his personality until we've got him, but he's he's a team player and, and uh, brings a lot of good juice every day. He seems to be genuinely enthralled to be back here. Uh, he is. He is. I mean, I, I've seen that. I mean, he's excited. He's got a bunch of family and friends here, and he he. You know, wanted to be here, and that that was exciting. I don't think we had him on our radar, not thinking that we could get that done until um, we realized he really wanted to be out here in Arizona, be close to his family, and, and so it was a perfect fit. Does it blow your mind a little bit that a guy in your draft is still playing at that? Position? It is, but then you got Brady out there doing what he's doing. So, and then you got Fitz doing what he's doing. So those guys, they tell me it's just a mindset. So I'm trying to get my mindset like theirs. <laughs> On the younger side, Buda Baker, what does he do to your secondary? He, he's been fantastic. I, I have always admired the way he played, even when I watched him in college, the physicality in the run game, things like that. But um, I didn't realize just how dynamic he was as a player and being able to play in coverage down in the box and be physical and even play the post. I mean, he, he can do a little bit of everything. And um, I know, you know Vance really likes what he's seen so far. Can you talk a lot about what Kyler's, what he can do. Why, what makes him such an accurate passer? It started at a young age. You know, I mean, his dad has trained him to do that since he could walk, and, and that's what it looks like. I mean, um, they worked very, very hard to perfect his motion and his accuracy and his touch, and, and it, it's paid off. But uh, you got to give a lot of credit to his dad and, um, you know, the vision he had for his son to, to play quarterback. So does it come down to the mechanics? Yeah, he's been – honed on those like I said I mean his dad is one of the premier quarterback gurus in the state of Texas and Kyler got that schooling each and every day and you know how the quick release the release point being able to drop it down and still be accurate I mean he he's a unique arm talent footwork would footwork drills and then throw into the nets how many times has he missed the nets not much you know <laughs> probably he's he's pretty accurate I mean he he's um, I've been around some pretty good ones, and, and he's up there. When you're talking about just touch and accuracy and quick release, consistently throwing a tight spiral. I mean, if he doesn't throw a spiral, it's like I look at him like, you, you good, you know? Um, and so that's exciting. Dr. Budo a little bit. It's his third head coach and his third season in the league. And just have you seen any knack of a transition for him, or does he just pick up the scheme? And kind of he's a quiet. If you've been around him, he's quiet, and he's businesslike, and, and that's how he's approached it. I, I think um, – you know, Coach Robertson that we have um, is one of the better safeties coaches probably in football, and so I think they, they have a good relationship going, and I think Buddha's excited to learn from him. When you went back and looked at the tape in terms of your 
your backup tackles and, and trying to find that. What, what did you see from the game? And do you have concern there that you'll be able to find a guy that, that works behind Gilbert? I think every coach in the league is looking for that you know, third tackle. And, and we feel like we have some guys on our roster that um, have the ability and, and hopefully can play into that throughout preseason. But yeah, th there's not a lot of those dominant tackles around. And, and so um, I, I like what Reese and Corey have done as far as um, progressing. But, you know, when the lights are on, now that they got to step up and, and prove they can do it week in and week out. Was it a bit day off for Swarry during yesterday? He, he had some reps, but we're kind of easing them back in. Yeah. Are there particular points of emphasis this week heading into preseason week two? You know, it's football cliche, but they always talk about the biggest jump is from week one to week two, and that's what we talked about, cleaning up the penalties, cleaning up the mental errors, playing fast, playing physical, and, and I expect it to be a better overall performance, um, hopefully, than the week before.